All right. Let's get to the word of God. I'm going to invite your attention to the book of John. That's okay. It's got to be something else. The book of John, 16th chapter uh, in the book of John. And we're going to continue our introduction to living in the ascension. I, I think I may call it something else after I get done with this, with this passage here. John 16, and it's the verses 5 through, you don't have to stand because I think I read it last week. Um, so don't worry about standing. I'll just, I'm just going to read it again so we can just get into the conversation on today. John, John I'm sorry, did I say 15? I meant 16. 16. Oh, 16, okay. So John 16. Uh, let's look at John 16, verses 5 through 8. John 16, verse 5 through 8. It simply reads this. It says, But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. I'm going to say it one more time. He says, he says it is to your advantage yes. that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. Uh, and, and we're going to use that. This passage is going to be the, under, the undergirding passage as we continue the discussion on the ascension. But I, I think I'm going to change a little bit. I'm, I think I want to talk about the advantage of the ascension. Because Jesus says, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. Amen. And that hit me as I read it on last week. And it just hit me like a, like a ton of bricks. Because he says, we, don't have the, we won't have the advantage if he does not ascend into heaven. In other words, think about this. He says, now this is, even he, he's considered the resurrection. He, he's, he's considered the crucifixion. He's considered all these things. He says, but it's not to your or my advantage if he does not ascend. So I thought about that on this week. Um, as I was preparing, because there's a lot of stuff that happens now in, his, in this ascension. We talk about the ministry of Christ and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But I, I couldn't get away from, what, what did he mean by, it is to your advantage that I go away? So just allow me for you know, the next few minutes, you know, kind of set, continue to set the stage for why the ascension is so important and how we need to really truly learn how to live in the ascension. Because you do know that according to the word of God, it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities, powers, and spiritual kindness in high places. He says that's who we wrestle against. And Jesus knew this. And Jesus knew that in order for us to get the advantage again, he had to go away. Because he had to send someone that's going to help us be able to handle the struggles of life. Now, uh, just in case you think I'm making this up, I know that in the book of Romans, the eighth chapter, listen what it says here. It says, um, in verse 35, it says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. But he says, who? But then he, he goes to start listing out the stuff. He says, who shall separate us? Shall tribulation, shall distress? Well, tribulation and distress is not a person. It's a situation. But the who that he's talking about is who is the who that brings the tribulation and the distress and the persecution and the famine and the nakedness and the peril and the sword and the problems and the heartaches. It's the who. Because if he, if, he, if, he, if he really meant something, look, in verse 31 he says, What then shall we say? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us, you know, 
um, yeah, but deliver us up for us all, how shall he not with him, you know, also freely give us all things? Who shall bring the charge against God's things? Who is, who is he who condemns? Who shall separate? He's saying, who is this? So there's a person behind the situation. Amen. See, we're made to believe in our life that all the stuff that we go through is just a physical thing. But what we need to understand, everything that we deal with has its beginnings and its roots in the spiritual realm. And it is controlled in the spiritual realm. But we are made to believe, as a matter of fact, we, we, we get so smart, Deacon Hawk, that we, we, don't, we don't think that God knows how he created things. And so we then try our own way where God has given us instruction in his word to do it his way. And so when you start understanding about the ascension, he says, if I don't go away, you are not going to get the advantage in your life. I don't care. He said, I don't care if, if, if it comes down to an issue in your life that is physical. You're not going to get the advantage if you don't understand. I, I can control things through the, through the one whom I sin because it's going to be to your advantage if you listen to him because I rule over all things. As a matter of fact, he says that he now sits in the heavenly realm as he sits over all things and all things must still report to him, even Satan himself. So, he says, it's to your advantage. <clears throat> so that means that it would have been to your disadvantage had he not gone away. So the ascension had to happen. But let's look at it biblically, though. When you look at Genesis 1, 26 to 28, you see where it says, you know, God said, let us create man in our image and our likeness. You know, it says that in, 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 in his image and his likeness, he created man and man, male, both male and female. Uh -huh. Then he says, now go rule, be fruitful, multiply, because that's why I created you. I created you to rule and have dominion. I created you to be the representation on this earth for me. While I rule in heaven, I want you to rule on earth. I created you to reflect my presence in the earth. I created you to represent, to reflect. But in order to do so, you have to have a relationship with me. And through that relationship with me, you will be able to reflect my glory based off of our relationship. And then you will be able to represent me because of your reflection in the world because now as we as before before sin hit, when Adam sat here, Adam was God's reflection in the world. Uh -huh. That's Genesis 1, 26 to 28. But here's what we went wrong. Minister Monique. Genesis 5, I mean, I'm sorry, Genesis 3 verses, um, I'm sorry, Genesis 5, uh, verse 1 through 3, says that, yep, God, you know, in the beginning, God created man in his own image and likeness. And then it says, and then Adam created Seth in his own image and likeness. Now, Adam created Seth in his own image and likeness because he was no longer in the image and likeness of God because he had fell out of glory with God. So in Genesis 3, it shows how he fell out of glory and all the curses came upon us. And so because all the curses came upon us, with, those, with that curse came a whole, lot of, a whole lot of other stuff that came with us. It came physical issues, physical traits. Right. I always, you know, I, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't chuckle, but I chuckle sometimes, you know, um, because the re women, the reason why you have what you have, you know, when you have your period, when you have all this pain and you have menopause and all that, it's because of the curse that was brought upon you. Because you do know that you are not meant to labor in you were not meant to have children in labor. You do know that, right? Because in the curse, he says, because you've done this, you are not going to have labor and pain. You're going to not have pain when you have your children. Men, you were meant to work, but work was not, to, was not supposed to be laborious. It was not supposed to be hard. It was not supposed to be sweaty. It was not supposed to be you working, like, what do they say, working like a dog. Work was supposed to be enjoyable. Because you were working alongside and with God himself. Yeah. So in the curse, in the curse, 
everything failed. In the curse, everything fell. In the curse, we lost our represent. God lost his representation. In the curse, God lost his reflection on the earth. In the curse, we lost our relationship with him. In the curse. But in the curse, what happened is we also handed off our authority to the enemy. In the curse, in the curse, we handed off, or Adam handed off, the authority that we had in the earth to the enemy, in the curse. I'm trying to get you to understand why he's talking about it's to your advantage that he goes away, because you have to realize that the resurrection just wasn't going to get it. As great as the resurrection is, resurrection wasn't going to get it, wasn't going to just cut it. He said, I, I have to go back because when I go back, I can now send the one who's going to regulate everything on the earth while I regulate things once again from the heavenly realms. So when you look at the ascension, it says that it is to your advantage, he says. So I kept looking at this thing. And, and so when I looked at this, I had to, after, after I looked at Genesis 3, um, and let, let's go over to Luke, the fourth chapter, the sixth to the seventh verse. Because we're still talking about the advantage of the ascension. So in Luke 4, which is also a very familiar passage, well, it should be to most of us. I go here all the time. But in Luke 4, something happens. Okay? In Luke 4, Starting with verse 1 says, Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Okay. But if you jump down to verse 6 and 7, he says, well, let's start with verse 5. Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, all this authority I will give you and their glory for this has been delivered to me and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. This is the first time that the devil told the truth. He said that I will give you this authority that was given to me, but all you have to do is worship me. Authority was handed over to Satan in the garden. And when that authority was handed to Satan in the garden, Satan began to run things. And so Jesus said that you have to understand how things are working right now. So when they were created in the image and likeness of God, when they fell, then not only did they fall, they handed over the authority to the enemy. And when he handed over the authority to the enemy, then when Adam, then when Adam had set, and Adam had Cain and Abel, when he had Cain, Abel, and Seth, then he passed down all of the sin through him. And so therefore he passed down the defeat as well to him. And so therefore there was no more authority that could be passed on because he had passed it off to Satan. He was supposed to have been passing it down to his children, but he passed it off to someone else. And so when he passed it off to someone else, then when, we, when, 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 uh, when he gave birth to Cain and Abel and to Seth and to the following generations, what happened is sin entered into, into the world and with, and with sin came everything that you and I fight against right now, right here on this day. So even when you walk on a daily basis, when you encounter something, it's because we are in a fallen world. That's why the ascension is so important. Because the ascension will allow us to be able to walk back in our authentic authority that was snatched away from us in the garden. I don't know, I mean, I get it. I, when I start understanding more about this ascension thing, because when, God, when he says it is to your advantage that I go away, he says, because when I go away, I'm going to sit in heavenly places at the right hand of my father. 
And as I sit at the right hand of my Father, I can now distribute that authority back to you through the Holy Spirit himself. And then you can then regain control of your life. Don't be fooled to think that you're just having bad luck. Don't be fooled to think that, you know, it's just stuff just not going your way. It just, just so happens. Don't be fooled to think that. What you and I experience on a daily basis is a fight against the enemy on a daily basis. And he will show up in different ways on a daily basis. And for those of us who don't know what our authority is, he will run over us every time. Because we don't know how to speak the authority that we've been handed because of the ascension. See, the authority wasn't there just yet, Dean Hawk, even after the resurrection. It wasn't there yet. It wasn't there yet. Because he was still walking the earth. See, the authority wasn't there yet. Sin was broken. Sin was broken. So it was, it was almost done. But he says that at this point, he says, the advantage that you are going to have is that now I'm going to send someone. And his name is the Holy Spirit. And he, and he says, and he says I'm, going to send, I'm, I'm going to send you the helper. Okay. And, and I love that term, the helper, because that term, the helper, is also from a, from a term that, that simply means, you know, one who is going to come alongside and lift and help you. Parakletos. To come alongside and lift and hold up. But what I like about this one, he says, this one that, I, that I'm going to send you is one who is just like me. No difference. There, 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 there is no downgrade. So when he comes, he's going to come because he's going to be just like me. There's, there'll be no difference when he comes. His name is going to be, his name is the Holy Spirit. And he will do what I tell him to do. Just like I did what my father told me to do. And, he, and my father, he says that he will speak what I tell him to speak. He will say what I tell him to say. He will go all over the place. When I was only, when he said when I was only restrained or constrained in one place, I couldn't get everywhere, but now I'm going to send him so that he can be everywhere at one time, helping everybody at the same time, in the same way, in the same strength. He says, that's why it's to your advantage that I go. He said, that's why. He says, so he says, you know, so he says here, however, when he, the spirit, I'm sorry, he said, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Yeah. The reason why it was also to his advantage that he goes away was not only, you know, to send the helper, but, you know, because the Lord, the Lord had prophesied that he would do it. So if he, did, if he didn't go away, that means that the Lord's word was not good. I mean, the God's word was not good. Psalm 110 says, you know, Psalm 110 gives us the prophecy. Jesus even prophesies about them coming. So he says, hey, if, if I don't go away, then my, my word is no good. Yeah. So let's look at this. He says, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Then he goes and begins, he begins to explain of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because I go to my father, of judgment because the rule of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, look at this. When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me. For he will take of what is mine and declare it to me, to you. Jesus says this, 
The reason why the ascension is so important, you know, it's not about just simple doctrine. It's not about just theological doctrine. The ascension is so important so we understand that at some point we've got to be able to take and realize, in other words, bring into reality the power of God in your and my life. And we've got to bring into reality the understanding that whatever we go through, God can conquer if we trust in him to do so, if we walk in the authority that we have been given. Remember, he says, who shall separate us from the from, uh, from, from love of God? Who, who shall separate us? Shall tribulation, shall peril. In other words, shall the person who brings tribulation in your life, shall he separate you from the love of God? Shall the person who brings peril in your life, shall he separate you? From the love of God. Who is this person that brings tribulation, that brings peril in your life, that brings problems in your life? Who is this person that brings pain in your life? Is it the person that you that sit next to you? No. His name is Diabolos. His name is Satan. His name is the great divider. But what we fail to see is we see that the person that flesh and blood is in front of us, yeah. we see them as our enemy. Yeah. Yeah. So we fight the wrong enemy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And because we fight the wrong enemy, we fight the wrong fight and the wrong battle. Yeah. But Jesus said that when I go away, I'm going to dispatch the Holy Spirit to come alongside you. He's going to give you a new set of eyes. He's going to give you another. He's going to give you the strength that you need. He's going to show you who you need to be fighting. He's going to show you how to walk in deliverance, how to walk in freedom. He's going to show you how to do these things. But then he's going to show you how to live with his father. I, I, I get it. I understand. I, I know we have a whole lot of stuff going. I know we got, you know, mental illness. I know we got all the, you know, we, we got a whole lot of stuff that's happening. And I don't want, I don't want to sound like I'm dismissing the, the, the physical illnesses that we deal with. But I guarantee you, if you understand how to live in the ascension, you'll be able to deal with most, more of those physical illnesses that you are not. Because you will find out it is someone who sits high and it is someone who dispatches the authority to you. It is someone that can cause you to speak into your situation. It is someone that can cause you to walk in the deliverance that you ought to walk in. It's somebody and his name is Jesus. But he had to go, he had to, he had to head out yes. so he could dispatch. Because he knows what we're going through. He knows what you're going through right now. And all he is saying is, I need you to come to me. I'm gonna, I want to just share this real quick. I didn't. Well, I wasn't going to go on this one, but I, need, I just need to share this with you real quickly because this is something that I always go back to in, in Matthew 11. And we're going to get to the other stuff in the end, but just, just give, me some, give, me some, give me some time real quick. In Matthew 11, listen to what he says in Matthew 11, the 25th verse. He says, thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for, it, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things, listen to this, all things have been delivered to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father. Nor does anyone know the Father except the Son. And the one to whom the Son wills yes. to reveal him. Yes. Wills to reveal him. Then he says, come to me all. See, you, you see, usually we, we just quote, come to me all that labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Yeah. But right. you, you, you got to understand the context of it. He is saying, let me help you understand something that I'm telling you from the beginning that nobody knows the father like I know him. And I can reveal him to those whom I will to reveal him to. 
and he says, those who are, are willing to reveal him too is those who are surrendered to me. And if you're surrendered to me, I will reveal God to you. I will show him what you, I will show you what he can do. And then he says, then he says, come to me all you that labor and I have laden. I will give you rest. He says, take your, he says, take my yoke upon you and learn for you, for I, you shall find rest unto your souls. But he says, learn from me. He didn't say learn of me. A lot of times we, we quote that wrong. He says, come and learn from me. What am I going what, what to learn from him? I'm going to learn who his father is. I'm going to learn what his father can do. I'm going to learn how he has built me. I'm going to learn how he has given me the authority that I need to have. I'm going to learn how to walk like I need to walk. I'm going to learn how to walk on my, uh, on my issues. I'm going to learn how to walk on top of all the stuff that I go through. If I come to him, he says, he says learn from me. And I will reveal him to you. The reality is the hell that you're going through right now. That's a reality. But the reality also is there is someone. And he says, I will reveal my daddy to you. But you got to come to me. You got to learn from me, not from somebody else. You got to learn from me. And here's the kick. He says, the way you learn from me is you learn from my Holy Spirit because whatever I tell him, he's going to tell you. He says, whatever you are going through in your life, he says, I care not whatever it is. I own it all. We get in trouble when we separate our situation from Christ. We get in trouble and we get defeated when we decide not to walk in the authority that the ascension gives us. We get in trouble when we allow folk who know not God to tell us who he is. We, we get in trouble when we, know, when we know folk who know not God. We allow them to tell us how to live life. We get in trouble when we allow folk who know not God tell us how to raise our children. We get in trouble when we allow folk who know not God tell us how to live our life, how to better our marriages, how to walk in victory. But the, but the advantage of the ascension is that he releases that knowledge back to us through his Holy Spirit. In these next series, in, the, in these next few Sundays, we're going to show you how the Holy Spirit act, is activated in the ascension. Amen. We're going to show you also how the ministry of Jesus in heaven is activated on our behalf Amen. in today's time. Amen. In this conversation, we're simply going to show you how the advantage of the ascension is how we activate Christ's authority in our life to walk in the deliverance that he has called us to, that he's called us to so that we can rightly represent mm -hmm. God so that we can rightly reflect God and so that we can have that right restored relationship yeah. with him. That's what the ascension is about. It's just not about a doctrine and theology. It really is about how do you understand the way of life that God has called you to. He says, now that I'm gone, and I've sent my Holy Spirit back to you yeah. to handle you till I get back. How are you going to live in the ascension? Mm 